each day comes with a new challenge. A challenge that a wanderer must overcome to find oneself, to find new home, to find meaning out there in the world. So each morning we greet this challenge. And each day we do what we can to overcome it. And whether we do or we don't, something is to be learned. And we continue to press on. Hi, Faze and Fiends. Welcome to another solo Tabletop Wednesday. Uh, I am so excited. If you can't tell from all the wonderful graphics we have here, we're doing a very special look at a game called Her Odyssey. Some of you may already be familiar with this game. Uh, it has been out for a little bit. Um, it is a game, a solo journaling game by S. Kaya J. And uh, what's so special about this one is we are looking at a copy of our physical edition that's being released for Friday. May 5th with our good friends at Knave of Cups. Um, so let me just show it off a little bit. We're going to mix it up here. We're going to be showing a little bit of the game, the beautiful booklet I have, as well as uh, playing it today. So first and foremost, here is our beautiful game. I don't even think my camera can show the absolute delight that goes into this. Um, we have this beautiful, I think it's like cryptograph kind of print screening of sorts. Um, and it's in this fun little bag. It's a holographic bag. It's got fun iridescence to it. I love it. Uh, so let me get this open here. So here is our game with my hands as uh, size, though I do have little hands. Be aware of that. <laughs> so this beautiful game. Uh, Kaya wrote and designed this using Keltrop Core as well as a uh, Aspire as one of the mechanics that they also utilize, or she also utilizes in the game, uh, which we'll go over that in a bit. Uh, this beautiful art, here's here's the full spread. Let me show the full spread. Look at that. Uh, the tree forest background is also on ours. Um, da -da -da, live adjustment on stream, there we go. <laughs> um, so you can see the, the true colors are kind of around my head here. Uh, that is the same sort of tree scenery that we have, but it's absolutely beautiful. Um, so the layout and art by Eoland, I hope I said that right, um, who is um, one of our fine folks over at Neve of Cups. Um, and again, you can find this physical copy, and I believe it's limited supplies if I've been t overheard correctly. Uh, so you can find this uh, starting Friday. Um, and there's this game, they've picked out some really cute little dice. I don't have those dice because I want to be able to, I have sizing, they're, they're little. Um, so I have some dice here, which I will also show once we get to the game. <laughs> but yeah, so it is gorgeous. We even got the little Nave of Cup symbol, trying to coordinate myself, bad coordination. Uh, yeah, so to sort of do a live flip through here, we have our little first page on the inside telling us what it is that we need um in order to play this game we got a nice little uh credit to the caltrop core uh my coordination is bad <laughs> uh little Ca caltrop core uh credit there um and yeah so just to read the first line here a solo journaling journaling rpg about a wanderer trying to return home or find a new one uh, so yeah, uh, and the pre like what we need most is a uh, at least one d4. I pulled it as a collection. Don't know how many can be seen on my camera. Getting a little tilty. My camera is being wild tonight. I don't know why. It just wants to have its own mind, of course. <laughs> so I have a nice little collection of d4s here, but you can play with just one. Um, I am also playing with this delightful deck that I also got from Nave Cups. Uh, this is the Art of Play Cabin Cab at Netarium. <laughs> I think I said that right. 
I played it once with it once before on stream, and I love these cards. They're very delightful, kind of like Macabre Cabinet of Curiosities. Um, so we get to play with the full deck, uh, just remove any cards that are supposed to be there. Like, uh, I have this card talking about the deck. <laughs> uh, so I just want to make sure they're all in here. And... Okay, I got to show this one because this is hilarious. It's a melting snowman with flowers coming out of their head. It's, it's delightful. <laughs> um, I believe it's all in here. Yeah, that's a joker. That's actually a really fun joker. Can't wait till that comes up. And where's the other one? There should be other one in here. Unless I completely missed it. Because it's important to have both jokers. You're playing with the full deck with them. So, ah, there it is. Okay. So we're good. So we got our dice and we got our deck of cards. Awesome. So now let's continue our little flip through of the game before we dive right in. So we can understand what we're playing and how we're playing. Um, so, of course, our first uh, look here is creating our Wanderer. Um, so we have three stats. We distribute those stats. We have 11 points to distribute in each one. So I have Vitality, which says here um, it is essentially our strength. So Principle of Fire, Bodily Strength, the Force of One's Presence, roughly maps to Strength and Charisma. Uh, our second stat is Quickness. So principle of air, a cunning wit, a daft and dexterous body, roughly maps to dexterity and intelligence. And then our last stat is fortitude. So principle of earth, calm, steadfast, self-belief, roughly maps to constitution and wisdom. Okay. So the points we're dividing into these stats are uh, just create that pool of dice we'll be drawing from. So if I have, let's say just one vitality, I believe we'd just be using one dice for that. So I didn't make myself a little character sheet. Can't see it. I have it off somewhere in the nebulous over to my side. <laughs> it's a digital sheet. Um, so we can decide our stats. Which for me, I did. Um, where is it? I, I Did I hide it? I may have hit it. There we go. So I have Vitality 3, Quickness 5, and Fortitude 3. So I believe that equals up to 11. Yes, it does. <laughs> 11, right? Yes, 11 stat points. Um, so I have my stat points there, and they do fluctuate as we play. Um, so if you are, like, if you have physical stuff, make sure you probably want to work with a pencil uh, so you can mark down <laughs> what you want if you're doing, like, a character sheet like I am, or just make notes of it as you go along in your journal. Um, so making our character. So my Wanderer's name, uh, my Wanderer's name, what feels like a good name? Claris comes to mind. I don't know why, but Claris comes to mind. So we'll go with that. So we have Claris. I feel older, maybe not quite middle-aged, but I am an older woman. So I'm Claris, she, her pronouns. And what I'm seeking... I am seeking a new place to call home. That's only because what I left behind was a place that got flooded out. It was washed out, my home ruined, and the very rickety foundations that barely upheld it gave way. So not much of a home left and it almost feeling like a marsh where it once sat. So I'm seeking a new home where I can find a little bit of solitude to give myself some res respite to almost retire in a way. I am exhausted <laughs> and I just use a place to relax and maybe develop other skills outside of being a wandering person surviving out in the wilderness of the world. 
So, was I prepared to set off on this? Probably only halfway so. I had a bit of an inkling that um, I wouldn't be prepared enough to save my home from being flooded and did not have the means to refortify the foundations. So I packed up the main things that I needed for surviving out in the woods, you know, some dried rations, uh, weapons such as a dagger, and uh, um, a short sword at least, a bow, um, and a quiver full of arrows that I was able to collect up. So I have some means of protection in hunting. Um, might get a little cold. It is damp, as I said, with the flooding and stuff. It was a lot of rain lately. Um, but hopefully with my fortitude and knowledge of uh, how to survive out in the woods, we can do that. My camera's wandering. Grr. I have a wandering camera with my wanderer. That's fantastic. <laughs> Um, someone or something that I once loved and lost. I had, I had a pet bluebird, just a very small but brightly colored bluebird with a red kind of crest uh, chest on it, sang beautiful songs. It was wonderful to wake up to. Um, and I'd put out seeds for it every morning and afternoon. Um, and it nested um, in the little sort of shambled treehouse. I'm not much of a woodworker, but tried to make a little treehouse for it uh, off of my own. Um, but there was one day where I noticed the seeds weren't eaten and the song did not greet me in the morning. And I thought maybe it migrated or uh, maybe it gone off to mate, but it didn't seem to return. That made me sad. There is a shadow that follows your wanderer and haunts her step. What is it? Hmm. For this, I think I'm going to draw a card because I have very fun imagery on these cards. So I'm going to draw a card and pull from that imagery, I think. Oh, interesting. So this is fun. We got a bug and a light bulb and an arrow passing through it. It's a little lightning bug. So my shadow that haunts me it very vaguely has this humanoid form, but it's still almost amorphous in a way to my eyes. And its own glowing eyes seem to almost wander back and forth across its face. Like there's lightning bugs that make up its vision that sort of just flutter across. And I feel it almost reaching into an aspect of myself of something that I've done a long time ago. Something that was purely accidental, but I carry that grief. It was an archery accident. And it almost feels like this shadow is just the personification of that grief that I carry. I believe, yes, Clarice is our character. So now that we have that, let's go into more of the mechanics of the game. 
Okay, so let me show this off because there's a really cool art on the opposite page of these. So here we have a really beautiful piece. So beautiful. This little lantern on the side. So here's the overview. Uh, so it consists of drawing cards from the deck, determining what hazards lie before you or for your wanderer using your stats to meet the challenges presented and writing about the experience. You may choose to write first person journal format or third person narrative. After you have written about what your wanderer has faced and suffered or overcome, place the card in the discard and prepare to draw again. Um, so ideally you should draw a hazard card from the deck each morning. Um, so you can play this over time. Of course, we are live streaming. I can't just draw a card, walk away for a day, come back. <laughs> Though that could be interesting. That could maybe all just want to sit here and watch an empty scene as I go on about my day. Uh, but we're not doing that. Um, so we'll just be playing the cards as they go and see what happens. My camera is wandering bad. I apologize. Camera, stay please. Maybe that's my shadow trying to disrupt me. <laughs> Um, but it says here for the little thing, uh, draw from the de deck each morning, spend the day considering your wanderer's journey and letting the story sort of passively develop in your mind and then return to the game in the evening and make your stat checks and record the results. We're doing that all in one go. <laughs> so here's a little bit more about, uh, actually about drawing the cards. When you draw a card, there is a numerical value associated to it, uh, which determines our omen score. So that's our difficulty uh, for the challenge that we are approaching. And it's a range of 1 to 13, 1 being your ace, then your numbers, and then uh, jack 11, queen 12, king 13. And then the suit that we pull uh, determines the kind of hazard we'll be facing. So there is something that's a little more... Uh, like diamonds are a little more like your villages and towns. So um, sort of, I guess, more human urban um, themes. Uh, hearts is for farmlands, meadows, moors, um, any curiosity. Uh, you mentioned like army or outdoor traps, um, accusations. Can even be a reflection of the wanderer's lost love. Uh, spades are our forests, cliffs, a desert, so I guess a harsher environment, change in weather and ruins, ambush, oath, misunderstanding, confrontation with our shadow. So that could be interesting. Uh, clubs are our wetlands, mountains, and the sea, a curse, sudden change in terrain, a crime. Um, that's a breakdown of how our suits go. And let me show this again because we've got more art. So we have our wanderer with a lantern there. Very pretty. And then it goes into making checks. Um, so as we said, we want to beat our omen score. So we'll go into more on that in our actual play. Um, but we have... Uh, our numbers here, so if we roll a 1, it's absolute failure, a 2 is a partial failure, 3, a partial success, and 4, absolute success. Uh, so the, if anyone who doesn't or hasn't played a game that involves partial successes or... Um, I don't know why my camera's being so naughty tonight. Naughty camera. Alright. If you haven't dealt with the sort of partial or full success before... Um, it's sort of a hierarchy of going through um, a yes and yes, but no and no but. So creating consequences and rewards on top of your success or failure. And then the next aspect of our tracking here of our different skills is uh, around the omen score. Um, if we meet or succeed our omen score, it is an auspicious day. And this is where the changing of stats come in. So if we're able to overcome the hazard and pass through on favorable terms, uh, refreshed and under our own power, possibly new friends. If your wanderer does not succeed, it is an auspicious day. 
Um, so it'll be either of those. And then, yeah. So why don't we get started? Because I see most of what's left here is more related towards the end of the game. Um, and I find I learn better to play by playing and my camera's going to mess me up. Hang on. Live on air fixing camera as best as I can. Hope no one gets severe dizziness. Hopefully this is a better position. There we go. <sighs> Hopefully that's better. <laughs> Stop wandering camera. He just wants to join the fun. The camera just wants to join the fun. Okay. So I'm gonna shuffle my deck. Because I love shuffling. I just love a shuffling. So I, Claris, I'm fairly fit quick on my feet. That's just a natural thing. And not that I'm new to the road, but again, my I do feel it in my bones a bit more. Uh, I feel headaches come on with the change of the weather, the aching. But we make do, and I've had a lot on my mind. So as bundled up as I can get with what I was able to grab, um, and along with rations and my tools, we head on through the forest along the paths that I know to try and find either maybe a new town we can live on the outskirts of, or I don't know, maybe I could find an abandoned cabin or a shack or something. But we'll find a place. So this day, it is gray, a little drizzly, a little misty. Not too cold, though. It's warm enough where if I'm walking, I'm able to keep my body temperature high. Um, but if I were to stay in a place too long and too wet, I might get a chill. Ooh. So we have Eight of Diamonds with a very, very sad gargoyle who is playing a sad tune on a guitar. So, with it being a diamond, ba -ba -ba, return to my book. Ah, so our first hazard hmm I it takes a while. But I do know there was a village that wasn't too far from my home. Just hearing from other people that have passed by in the past. So I continue my way in that direction. And I come across the small little village. Barely a village, it's more like a hamlet. There's only five, six houses at most. And as I come in, um, there's a little bit of a bustle. A little bit of noise going on amongst the villagers, the folks of the hamlet. And as I come to the place, I see that one of the homes had a partial collapse from the roof. And I can very much see in the top of it just this big gaping hole that collapsed in and some of the folks are around trying to figure out how to get in as they seem to can't get the door open um some calling for a ladder or anything to try and help but we can hear uh amongst the chatter just um people yelling to an individual inside Jackson, Jackson, are you okay in there? Please talk. 
So I come and approach one of the ones that are starting to look about and they spot me and um, it is a older woman, older than me. She has very just pure white hair and a giant bun um, just right on top of her head. Kind of in a moppish sort of mess put up there. She must have rushed out to look at the commotion and she beckons me over saying, Oh, please, please, you wanderer, please. You look like you are strong. Please, could you, could you aid us, please? So, of course, I rush over, taking a further step ahead than she is. She seems to do a quick shuffle, shuffles. And... Ugh. <sighs> I don't really have any tools or anything on me that can be left. So I start immediately looking for maybe a loosened beam that I can use to break down the door. The, the way the ceiling collapsed or the roof collapsed, it must have collapsed right in front of that door. So I'm going to try first to use my vitality to see if I can break down the door. I am... So we are three. So I got my three dice here. We're going to roll the three. And we're looking for our highest value. Oh great, our highest value is a four. So I rolled a three, a one, and a four. So here's that. So that is a absolute success. Um, so I immediately rush up uh, on the little sort of railing that encompasses the front porch. I yank up a part of that, just the top part, and pulling it up. And with that in my hand, creating sort of a mini, uh, like, ram, hand ram of sorts. I prepare myself, I square my shoulders, measuring out to make sure I don't hurt myself on the ram, because I could very much dislocate a shoulder. And with just one deep inhale, I do a quick dash forward. And first, that beam, that makeshift ram hits it, and I feel that door lurch forward a bit. I take a few more steps back. And another breath. As another villager comes up and opposite me, grabs onto the rant or the piece of wood with me, and we both go and ram. And more of the door lurches forward. And we see that rubble scatter a bit from that doorway. And as I peer in, just that light trickling in from the broken top dust billowing up from our sudden movement can hear a slight groan from our bashing into the door so pause as I see what we need to do so we did succeed on our stat check so that's one stat check and that is our vitality so i'm trying to see how we combine our numbers here this is new to me fresh look fresh game As I flip on through. Sweet. Okay. So total up the stack checks your wander made in the day and compare the sum against the omen score. Okay.
And then... Of course, our first roll determines what other complications or um, developments we get. And we can use our other stats. We can only use our stat once per day. So if I'm going to use another stat, it has to be one of my other ones. So total up the stat checks. So I guess since I rolled... I have a three total so far. Let me look at our example of play. So if you ever get lost and you're wondering, there is a wonderful example of play in our book here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So, wait, far more than those are. Okay. I wish I can see, like, the number adding. I think that's what my brain is missing here. <laughs> I'm so visual. I am an incredibly visual person. Um, so, the total score is eight. So where does that ink come from? Uh, okay. So. I got my one check with my fortitude. Or not my fortitude, my fa fatality. My fatality. Alright, back into the game. Um, so I we get the door open just enough that... A body can fit through so I start squeezing and make my way here in, and I do make out the sounds of the man that was caught under the fall and I get with the force who we're putting on the door and with the help of the other villager so he's able to dislodge an amount of the rubble that had fallen in so the roof shales and the ceiling beams So now I gotta figure out the best way to pull him out without causing any further injuries. Okay. Well. This may be a moment of fortitude as I need to stay level-headed, stay calm. And think through the situation. So we'll get our three dice. As I'm looking over the rubble, finding where we might be able to move it without hurting the person. Maybe finding the person exactly where they are in it. All right. So our highest is a three, we roll two twos and a three. So a partial success. So I see, I can see where he is. I'm able to move a good amount of the rubble, but it is very weak beams. And as I make a clearer way to get to the man, I hear the creaking and groaning and more of the roof starts to creak before more parts of the shale start tumbling down. And though I have a bit of a path and a bit of a leeway that I can crawl into, there is a lot more rubble that's just weighing heavy and it's becoming harder to try and lift it up and out of the way. So, I may have to speed up 
to try and get to him before any more of this roof comes down. I know enough of where the beams are, where I can avoid what rubble to pull up so we don't accidentally hit any more beam or hit the ceiling to cause more of a collapse. So now I'm going to go quick, so I have a full five dice pool. All right, we got two fours and three twos. So we got we got a full success with bonus. Um, so very quickly as those uh, roof shale starts coming down, I eptly leap on through, diving across some of the rubble in an opening. And I see the man, his body is facing towards me, his head is towards me. So I just scoop him up underneath the armpits and quick look to make sure there's nothing caught on him, that there's nothing uh, jammed into him in any way so he doesn't get hurt on the pole. I ease him up and start pulling him out and drag him out quickly the way I came, making sure I don't knock anything. And almost in just a state of reaction, just my body reacting, I pull him up and drag him quickly, avoiding any sharp bits poking out and bring him to the door. Another villager is waiting there, hands out, ready to grab on and pull him along with me. And just as we get him out, we hear the groan of the house and another large part of the roof collapsing in. We can just see the dust billowing up from the opening and billing out from the doorway. The man is stunned. Um, obviously going to be bruised all over, but he seems to be okay. And the villagers cheer and give me pats of gratitude and thank me for being able to get in there and bring out uh, this man. And we, we, we did good, I believe. We, we did very good. All right. So I do believe our total for this day beats our omen score, because our omen score is eight. And... With that, I was going to mark down that was an auspicious day, is it? Yes, auspicious day. As now I have very happy villagers, though they don't have a place for me, sadly. Uh, there is no house, and they have a house to fix, so no supplies to try and make a new house for me. Um, but they do direct me down one of the roads and where I could possibly go, and I am welcome to guest in one of the houses for the night. Um, and though they're all very warm and welcoming, uh, just something isn't quite there for me to stay here. So we're going to move on when the morning comes. So I will also say, because I didn't get to say this, there is variations uh, on how to get your scores in play as well. One of them being, um, if you want to ease your time with the omen score, is uh, just roll 1d4 and add the individual, individual stat, uh, and it will depend on the value of the d4, but this variant makes it easier to meet the omen score. So if I were to just do one stat, it was two, I rolled fatality five. 
There's a beat moment square. Oh yay. We very much succeeded, and now that we've had a auspicious day, I find in that sort of recovery of night, um, we get a decrease of one of our stats by one. Um, we used all three to beat our omen score, so I will decrease my quickness from five to four. because as much as I succeeded, it is tiring work. It was very tiring trying to pull that person out. So, discard pack. Put it there so we can still see the fun art. And on to our next day. Ah, oh, I love this card. It's a pizza. I love pizza. <laughs> so, spades. What we got? And as I'm looking, dude... Do, do command code NAVE, and that will bring up a link to the NAVE of Cups site if you want to check out their stuff. <laughs> Miss Winford, gotta head out to bed. Well, I hope you have an excellent evening for anyone who needs to pass by. Thank you for coming, and remember to check out the VODs later. Gonna be VODs. <laughs> Alright, so spades. I'm back on the path, following what the villagers have told me, and it leads to the depths of the woods. It is very dense and very dark. And there are times that I hear that blue bird song, and I keep thinking of my little blue bird. There's, I want to be hopeful and think that it might be them. I also know there could always be other bluebirds out in the world. As much as the wood is dense, the gray skies above me get darker and denser in turn. I hear a roll of thunder. And it's not long before the downpour starts. And flashes of lightning crackle above, barely being seen through the darkened branches of the canopy. So I try and look around. You gotta be quick and think. I need to find a place I can make shelter out of. Either some, uh, like a little ravine with an open side of roots and such that I can dive under and use a sort of a covering, or maybe I can find some old branches I can prop up and lay a blanket over to try and create a shelter. It's important to get out of um, conditions. So I'm going to use my quickness down to four on quickness. Yeah. All right, beautiful. We rolled a four and a four, so we got total success here. As I said, I am familiar with wandering the forests and wandering the woods and surviving out in the wilds. So very quickly, I recognize the patterns of the wood of where I can take branch and root 
and create a very quick, like, lean shelter for myself. So very steadily, I prop up a bunch of sticks, lay over uh, some dirt and leaves to create a more solid protection up against a large tree. And there I have a little sort of lean tent of ways and duck in. It is cramped <laughs> um, and a little damp, but it's enough that I can stay out of the downpour. And just at the sort of mouth of it, I create a very small fire to create warmth for myself. <sighs> Great. However, the rain continues. The thunder roars loudly. You can feel it almost shaking down the trees. I don't know what I have to wait it out though what else could I do to keep myself comfortable and warm I'm definitely thirsty Some sips when the water skin <laughs> I guess I just need to find some patience here. Take my time. The forest is really dark and the shadows very quickly easy to jump at. And with every crack of thunder, you feel it shaking through your body as though your very bones feel it. So with the fire, I'm going to try and I guess keep myself from that building of anxiety. The trying to calm my nerves down, trying to just let myself feel numb almost to the world. Though I can easily get numb in the weather. So we will do a fortitude. See how well we can handle this weather. Okay, got two ones, but one three, so we got a partial success. What? Okay. The wind picks up a bit, and I can feel that chill enter my body. And I can just feel that chill come up along my spine to the back of my skull and that creeping feeling as though a hand or bugs or something just very lightly tickling the hairs on the back of my neck and I very quickly just try and brush it off shouldn't be anything behind me, but at the same time, I don't want to even dare look at what could be behind me. So I pivot my body, make sure it's against the tree. And that wall of stick and mud and leaf, you know, very close to my forehead, just across. And I keep my eyes staring into the little fire that I made for myself. Rain is dripping in. And though... And though I'm not in pain 
from the weather or the cold. It's not letting up and it's going to leave a very, very long night. <laughs> and I know I'm going to be exhausted come sunrise. So we did beat our omen score. So another thing goes down. I will do... I'll do quickness again. I think I can do it multiple times in a row, can I? Let's double check our rules. <laughs> nope, that's not the right page. The stat check used. I did use quickness, so you can do it multiple times in a row then. Well, the other way. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that when we that happens. All right. So let us continue on to our next card, shall we? Thank you, pizza card. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so it's a perfume bottle. There is a skull at like the little mouth that's puffing out the perfume. And, uh, that is a little, little fetus in the bottle. <laughs> it's almost like, um, in those curio, like, curiosity museums or something. With the, um, uh, I'm not sure I say the right wording here. But essentially, like, the little babe, like, the fetuses and vials and stuff that they have. It's really interesting. Hey, that's our card. This is going to be a hard day. I'm... I'm exhausted. And... <laughs> this is A12. Okay. So. With it a spade, we are... We are going... Through the woods it almost feels like we're heading towards the mountains but it's hard to even see it's as though with every passing hour the woods gets darker and denser those songbird calls get softer and further in the distance and i hear the cracks of twigs once in a while the shuffle of underbrush slight movement of the branches above against the wind. I can feel the hairs on the back of my neck just stand and just my skin covered in goosebumps. Not from the chill of cold and rain, but something more instinctual. And my eyes start around, trying to catch sight of it. The one thing that's making me feel this anxiety as it bubbles with every turn of head, with every crack of twig. <sighs> For a split second in one of those dark spaces see the faint blinking of two glowing drifting lights I need to maintain my calm so we're gonna roll fortitude for that wisdom part I think Ooh, we did well. Okay, we got two fours and a one. <laughs> so as the recognition hits, I don't make any sudden moves. I just turn away. As that seems to be the one thing that always keeps me solid against this, is to not look at it. Not acknowledge it. 
happens every time I think about it and it's there, it almost feels like it feeds off of that. So I shut out as the blinders on and keep my pace going forward. I hum a tune and reflection of that blue bird. <laughs> It was just something unique to that song that put me at ease, that brought peace to my mind in the mornings. And though I can never reach the beauty of my bluebird and their tone that they could reach, it is something I still hum to myself. So, <laughs> we gotta start moving quickly, though. I want to get out of this forest. So let us go at a faster pace. Wow, okay. <laughs> three, three, and a four. Doing super well. So as I center and I bring peace to myself and focus on that song from my bluebird, I take a breath and I speed up my walk. Almost in a steady raise of speed before I enter a full run leaping over any fallen log or any stream in the way crashing through branches that may have overgrown the path and the forest does begin to thin out a little bit it does begin to pull back and more of the path becomes clearer as more light enters the space. This is a very hard day. I am exhausted. I am tired. But I need to press on. I haven't really escaped it. Not yet. So let me see. Roll on vitality and see what we can do. Ooh, not much. Uh, two ones and a two. <laughs> So we did okay. So now that we've escaped the successes, we have our first failure. Ba 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 ba. So let me just make sure. I believe it's just a failure. Where's my roll page? There it is. Uh we do not get what we want. <laughs> so I'm trying. And I was doing so well escaping uh, in pace, feeling more confident in myself as I get out. And as I see the path opening up and thinking, oh great, the light will help me, I find my foot slips. And what I thought was a clean straight road had actually opened up into a cliff face. And I tumble down into this ravine before I feel a strike on my head. So this was an inauspicious day. 
a boo. But that means one of the stats. Uh, each stat that was not used for a stat check that day increased by one. Um, we used all of them, <laughs> so we can't do that. All right, cool. Sometimes it's good to just not use all of them. I got to learn that. So now I know. <laughs> I, 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 my omen score should have told me. I should have known. But that's okay. We are passed out in the ravine. So let's see what our next day brings. Ooh, okay. King of Hearts. This one's cool. It's a sword going through a heart with an some of the nervous system coming off there. That's really cool. So a heart, I believe, was a something more. Where's my page? Where's my page? There it is. So I do eventually come to. The sun is barely broken the horizon. And I just feel this throbbing, pounding in my head. And I put a hand to where I felt that hit. And I do see a bit of blood. Though I'm dried now just come off on my hand as I wipe it away okay I get up and I feel the dizziness and I take a breath and try and find where my bag is and might have something I might have packed something to overcome this so now I'm dealing with my consequences of the previous day so I'm gonna use they're all three right now. I'll just do one one check for this one. We are going to use our quickness. We gotta think about or recall how I can bandage myself up. What is that? Uh, it's four. Sweet. So, I do find some items in my kit, in my bag, uh, a bit of bandages, so I wrap up my head, I clean away uh, with some water and a clean, clean water and a washcloth, just dampen away the blood, find a bit of a ointment that I tap onto it before I bandage it, everything up. And I make sure I drink some water to hydrate myself. Important to hydrate. There... There isn't much more I can do here. I can only really keep pressing forward. I do take a quick look around and I don't see any dense darkness or any moving shadows anymore. Okay. <sighs> this is fine. This is fine. So with a four absolute success, I do feel the headache start to subside as uh the unique ointment mixture does its work and the hydration 
uh, fills my body and it feels good. But... But I do find as I'm trying to climb out of this ravine that it is very hard. The ground is wet. Um, so I just keep slipping down the sides, unable to grab anything. And any roots I grab at, they just snap just from the weight of um, my means of getting up. So I find myself kind of stuck in this ravine. So I just follow it for a long time. Uh, at points hitting river and it sinking, growing from ankle to knee to hip. It is uncomfortable and exhausting. <laughs> so it's a very an auspicious day. But now I get an increase of two of my stats that I didn't use. So I didn't use Fatality and didn't use Fortitude. Here we go. Get my digital notes organized. There we go. So. <gasps> Our first Joker! Look at that! So, uh, I guess with this card, Art of Play Cabinetarium, which I got from Nave of Cups. Make sure you check that out. <laughs> so, let me... First, drop that command in chat because I didn't get to. Enjoy that chat. Um, so let us see what this means now that it's come up. So when we get our jokers. Do, 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 do. Where is the page? It's not a very long book, but there it is. <laughs> so false and true homecomings. The first joker drawn is the false homecoming. Your wanderer reaches a place that she believes is her lost home, or can be a new home. So for us, for Clarice, it is hopefully a new home, or what she hopes is a new home. But she is thwarted in some way. She may find she is a stranger here. Uh, her home may no longer be what she remembers, or she needs and self-understands being may have changed beyond recognition. All right, so let me make a note. We got our first joker. So I come out after a long, long couple days. I make it out of this first sort of patch of woods at the foot of the mountains. And I come across a cabin. And it seems like it was left alone for a while, and I think to myself, maybe this could be it. As I go up, my only immediate thoughts are shelter, to get warm, to clean the mud and water off me, and sleep. Sleep in whether there's a comfortable bed or I can have blankets on the floor, whatever there is available. I just hurt right to my bones. <laughs> but even as I stand on the porch of this cabin, something in me just tells me that this isn't the place. 
And I see signs of who had lived here before. The scuff marks on the floor, long left. Soot. Old and cold in the hearth. Cobwebs and dust all over the ceilings and walls and broken furniture. There's a whistling from the wind coming somewhere into the cabin, sounding almost like a soft cry. And though it, it, it looks dry in here, there's still a sort of dampness. And though I could imagine setting up a home space, this feels so isolated, so distant from everything. It took me days to even get this far. And the whistling picks up a little bit, that soft crying becoming more of a mournful moan. As the house creaks a little bit against the wind. Condensation is built up on the windows. There's something that just prickles up that feels like, though I can make rest here, maybe. I shouldn't make home here. There's something that's almost warning me to not make home here. <sighs> I take a seat on the floor. Scraping off the mud from my clothes. Stripping down so I can clean off better and maybe get some warmth going. I grab some of the broken furniture. It seems like wood. Throw it in the hearth and try to get a fire going. And Maybe it would have been smarter to check if the chimney's clear. Guess we're about to find out. But... Maybe, maybe this is just, it could be from seeing that shadow that just makes me uncomfortable being here. And I'm trying to think if there's any moments when I hit my head that I may have been awake or aware. As I consider all that I went through so far, just this wave of intense exhaustion comes over me. I just find myself curling up on that floor near the hearth. Thankfully, I don't see any smoke exiting into the room as opposed to going up the chimney. I sort of just blurry eye blink before I pass out. So with that, with our false homecoming as we went over everything, I'm counting down or how many good days we had. Auspicious days. And we had two thus far. So I wrote down two. All right. Oh, this is interesting. So now that we have that, this is now our fourth stat. Hope. Ooh. At any time, you may subtract 
subtract one from your hope stat and add one to the result of an individual stat check. However, if your hope stat ever reaches zero, your wanderer loses all hope and abandons her journey. No! Well, you've had two days so far. So we have two. Or if we don't all lose all hope, we have one that we can add to anything. So. Let's see how our next day goes as we leave the cabin. Oh, I love this card. It's a horse watering can. It's delightful. So five of spades. Uh, what was spades? Spades was... <laughs> horse goes okay. So... I do wake up in the morning. Right. Fantastic. Um, having now slept in a building after being out in the woods for so long, I feel a bit better. But still uncomfortable. There is that still sort of crying whistling that I can hear through the cracks of the cabin. And... something off-putting. Like I'm missing something in the space that would just tell me everything of why I shouldn't be here. So I just eat my food, dress myself back up, and go on my way. I wander down the paths, the forest a little more sparse as I'm heading. Hmm. This is still the direction the villagers told me to go. I'm not too sure, but I guess I'm stuck wandering for now. So wander I shall as I continue down the paths. And as at one point when I take a turn and there is a cliff face as I'm rounding the foot of the mountains. And as I'm passing by, I hear movement shuffling along and the sound as if something is being pulled. I realize in a very snap second that I have to move. Yay! Got two threes and a four. So, absolute success. <clears throat> so as I realize the motion, I quickly leap forward and do sort of a tuck and dive as I roll around and I hear the whoosh of something being jettisoned up from the ground. And I look back and I see uh, this roped net pulled and yanked to the side to the cliff. And then I begin to hear the shouts of people from up top. Uh, I hear a man shouting at another, saying, You gave away your position, you dolt! Go! And seeing these heads of men starting to pop up and go over and clamor down the side. Hmm. I used my quickness. Well, I'm getting surrounded, I think, in this moment. And if a bunch of these people think they're going to get the best of this woman, I suppose I'll have to show them my sword skills and why... Ambushing strangers may not be the best means of survival out here. Oh! That rolled off. Was it two? Got a one, two, three, four! Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Alright. So I draw my sword. And I have it out as I see the rest of the star is circling me. 
They tell me to drop the sword and give them my bag. And I shake my head. As I turn in my hand the blade and bring it up, ready for the challenge. So they rush at me. And I realize they are untrained, more as a sort of ruffian or vagabond that thinks simply having a weapon would be enough for them to bully and take advantage of people. Well, they picked the wrong person to bully, I think. As adeptly, I use my strength to thrust them out of the way, the clanging of metal against metal. And swiftly, I punt the head of one, sending them to the ground. My sword clatters against the blade of another and sends it off into the sky. It's pivoting in the air, catching the light in a gleam before it lands off in the distance. And then as a, another one comes up, I give him a hard, solid kick in the knee before I turn around and again with the butt of my blade, just strike him in the head. Very quickly, each of these men fall. I sort of look them over. I wouldn't be as cruel as to take away a man's blade. That's for any person important to have things happen in the woods, such as when a group of people wish to ambush you. So I quickly look to see if they have any supplies. Um, I see some food. That's great. I'll take some of those rations. They can hunt for anything they need. I'm sure they'd be fine. Um, water skin? Oh, okay. I'll pour some of that water into my own. Uh, maybe some other little hiking things that I could utilize. That's about it. This is pretty good. I suppose I should go and find my next sleeping spot for the night before it gets too late. So I spring the bodies of men as they are unconscious up against the cliffside. And once I see they are comfortable, give them a little, one of them a very light slap on the cheek so you can wake up a little bit as I start walking away. <laughs> this was a auspicious day. And... That means we lose one to our stat, so we'll say Vitality. Back to three. All right. Wow. Oh, <laughs> it's the other Joker. Oh, I wasn't expecting it to happen so fast. This is really fun. It's like a frog as a cabinet. My auto poster, it's so good. All right. Wow, okay. I wasn't expecting this to happen so quickly. <laughs> So, let's see what this means for us then. So, <laughs> uh, our second Joker is the true homecoming. Your wanderous journey comes to an end. Take time to write about all she has done and the joys and scars of her experiences have given her. All right. So. I think there's still much for Claris that's sort of unresolved. Her shadow that haunts her still. But she's come to accept her bluebird is gone and keeps that song with her. As it has shown to give her peace and keep her calm as she hums it to herself. And though she's seen other people, like those three that tried to ambush her, be 
terrible or what have you. People are just trying to survive and she understands that. She does feel her bones just so achy against all the weather and the dampness and the wet. And maybe just try her own path as to following the instructions of the villagers. Maybe she would not have fallen to that ravine. But for the most part, it was just really that one couple of days of bad stretch. And it's sort of lapped around that guilt, that shadow, that persists. <sighs> Maybe one day she could figure out how to deal with that, but... But she has seen the beauty of the Force, the kindness of people, and the kindness in herself, and the strength that she has that's still there. Eventually she does find a place. It's close to another village. Um, she doesn't want to be right in one, but close enough. Uh, so she finds a place that she's able to build up a new home, no longer at a level that would get flooded out. Um, there's a lot of fresh mountain air and just a cacophony of birds in the morning, various sounds and not just the calls that she's used to. And according to my fun, delightful, beautiful book here, that's, that's our game. Drawing our second Joker ends the game. So there we go. <laughs> so you can see this can be as short or as long as uh, it is depending on the randomization of the cards. Uh, is that still quite a- oh god, what is that card? I love it. <laughs> There's still quite a number in the stack. Uh, how many do we pull, actually? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, there's there's 54 cards in a deck, so we only pulled seven, so we ended this game pretty fast. Um, and I'm just going to show this card because I turned it over. I love it. It's a skeleton with bats on it. I love it. Uh, and yeah, so our, my wanderer didn't lose hope, which is great. Fantastic. Beautiful. We would hate to lose hope. Um, and we only had a couple bad days, only a couple, which is fine. That's a good, that's a good thing, <laughs> but I am. I'm actually quite delighted. This was really nice. And I can see if you were to play it like as a daily thing where you wake up, you draw your card, you consider what that hardship is. And then you come back to it in the evening and start writing out, journaling out uh, what happens, your ideas for it, how the stats roll out and interpreting all that and leading into our next day. I mean, with 54 cards, uh, if you did it on a weekly basis, that's like your entire year if you don't draw the last Joker until the last week of the year. <laughs> um, but you can be playing for at least 54 days at max, technically. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, wonderful. So, Let's make sure we shout out everything that's going on here. Her Odyssey. A solo journaling game by S. Kaya J. Beautiful, delightful game as we have seen played here today. And this beautiful physical copy. Limited editions available at our friends, the Nave of Cups. Uh, Naveofcups.com. 
and I do happen to have a promo code too, so if you just load up your carts, there's of course this game coming up Friday, as well as many other beautiful things. But make sure you go there, check them out. Lots of lots of things going on. I love it. And once again, you can see on the inside just beautiful little little illustrations in there. Yeah. So I am being asked. Will you be playing this again in the near future? I don't know about the near future. I have a lot of plans. Um, we got a lot more games to play through. We have some other, at least one other event uh, coming up by the summer, I believe, hopefully. Uh, part of a game jam or something. Um, but if you want to do your own wanderer story, Physical edition this Friday, May 5th, as part of Nava Cup's uh, first Friday. I believe that's it, right? <laughs> um, so make sure you definitely check that out. Just such beautiful things going on over there. And this deck is also from them. Beautiful cabinet of curiosities, basically. I mean, death stuck under a glass. He's just sad standing there under a glass. How is that not delightful? <laughs> For us morbid people. <laughs> oh, shoot. I actually haven't seen every card in this deck. Some of these I recognize, some of them I haven't drawn yet. Oh, that's a really cool mortar pestle. It's a, a bowl, like the uh, bowl and then the, pe the little pestle, the rod, is a woman's body. It's really cool. I love it. I love it. So that's also available at Neva Cups. Great to pair with this game as well. I love pairing uh, cards thematically, dice thematically. I try to match my dice to the colors. I don't have any true blue or this yellow, sadly, but I tried my best to match. <laughs> so yeah, pick up, pick up any additional things you need. You need dice, you need cards to play this game. So. Remember to add those to your cart too this Friday as you get your own limited edition copy. This beautiful physical edition. It's beautiful. It comes in this beautiful packaging of if you like shiny, colorful things and crinklies, get it. <laughs> All right. I, I think I'm done throwing that at everybody. Um, so for those live here on Twitch, I did do a command code earlier. I'm going to do it right now. Command code NAVE. That brings up just a direct link to uh, the site. Uh, so keep an eye on that, uh, especially Friday. And then for those watching this later on YouTube, on the VOD wall, I hope you just check it out. Just see, see if it's available. <laughs> and otherwise, for everybody who is here, who has watched, thank you so much for watching. This was a very delightful, fun game. Um, I was... <laughs> uh, other than my camera wanted to be a little mischievous at the start, so I do apologize for that, but we got it fixed. It behaved. It, it learned to behave. Um, and yeah, come up. You know, I'd love to hear what other stories y'all come up for your wanderers when you play the game. And uh, remember to, you know, support all of us out here in the tabletop industry as we are making a lot of fun things and we're all supporting each other, um, making these stories and these adventures together. So even when we are playing solo, because you're all here watching me play solo and being a storyteller as best as I can. <laughs> um, and yeah, so with that, remember to hydrate, to sleep well, to take your medications and vitamins and any of the other bits and bobs you need to do for yourself, to care for yourself. And I hope you have a good day, night, evening, whatever it is in your time zone. And we will see you next time. Bye.